If you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and try to solve the question on your own before listening on. What we'll do first is draw a free body diagram of the wheel showing the forces that are acting on it. Now we'll notice that there are actually four forces acting on the wheel as it's being pushed up this step. We have the gravitational force pointing downward, we have the applied horizontal force applied to the right, and then the corner of the step is exerting a force on the wheel as well since it's making contact with it. And actually there's two components to that force. There's the vertical which points upward and then the horizontal which is pushing to the left. Notice that we're not including a normal force of the floor pushing up on the wheel because at the moment we're drawing this free body diagram, the wheel is no longer contacting the floor at this point right here, so there would be no normal force. What we'll next do is calculate the net torque acting on the wheel as it's being pushed. And when we do that, we have to select a so-called pivot point. And it's going to make the most sense to select the pivot point to be right on the corner of that step because that is where the force FV and FH are passing, we don't know the value of those forces. And so it's going to be advantageous to put the pivot right here because the torque produced by those two forces would equal zero. And so as a result, we only have to concentrate on the torques produced by the gravitational force as well as the horizontal applied force. And actually what we want to do is take a look at some of the distances involved here because we know that torque is equal to a force multiplied by a so-called lever arm. Now we can see from the diagram that we have the center of the wheel right here. And acting at the center we know that there's that horizontal force. Maybe we could just redraw it right here. And so when we go to plug in the torque for that force, we're going to need this so-called R value right here. Now it's important to note that R has to be a perpendicular distance to the pivot point. So for example, if we extended this line of force in this fashion, and then we take the pivot here and we draw a line that's perpendicular to that force so that it forms a 90 degree angle, the R for the torque equation is going to be this distance right here. That's going to be for the applied force, F. Now, in order to figure out an expression for that distance, we can come over here and note that this distance is simply the radius of the wheel. We know that from here to here is the height that's marked h, and therefore this distance from here to here is going to be r minus h. So when we plug in for the torque of the applied force, we're going to use a distance of r minus h. In fact, let's go ahead and start to fill in that torque. Now we also need the torque produced by the gravitational force. The gravitational force is pointing downward as follows. Remember we need to extend that force and then figure out a perpendicular distance to the pivot. Now that perpendicular distance would be this distance right here because that forms a nice 90 degree angle with an extension of the mg force. And so this distance can be obtained by applying the Pythagorean theorem because we have a right triangle. Why don't we go ahead and just call it a for now, and then we know that a squared plus the other leg squared is going to equal the hypotenuse squared. The hypotenuse you can see is r. We'll go ahead and solve this for a by subtracting the r minus h squared to the right side and then square rooting. And then if we wish we can actually square out the r minus h. And then if we distribute the negative sign we can see that the r squareds are actually going to cancel out, and then we're going to end up with a positive 2rh minus h squared. And so this expression is going to serve as the R value for the torque that's produced by the mg force. Remember, torque is equal to the force times some distance R. So for the gravitational force mg, this will be the R. So let's plug that into our torque equation that we've been setting up over here. Now, because the wheel is not accelerating as it's moving up that step, we can set the sum of the torques equal to zero. You're going to notice that we chose an opposite sign for the torque produced by the gravitational force. Maybe we could take a moment to explain that. Here we have the wheel and here we have the pivot point. The applied force would be pushing to the right. Actually it was pushing more in the center of the wheel. And we can see that about that pivot, that applied force would tend to cause the wheel to rotate in this direction here. On the other hand, the gravitational force, which points this way, is tending to try to cause the wheel to rotate in the opposite direction. And so when we plug into the torque equations, we have to just make sure we choose an opposite sign for one of the torques. And so our next step is to solve for the force F. 
And to do that, we can add the mg term over to the right side and then divide both sides of the equation by the term r minus h. And then at this point, we can just plug in the known values. The mass was given. We know g, of course. The height is given in centimeters, so we'll have to convert that to meters by multiplying by 10 to the minus 2. And then same thing with the radius r. And when you plug in and crunch that all down, you should get approximately 13.6 newtons. So that is the correct answer to the question.